Here we go, here's chapter four. So let's talk about where we stand again. Where we stand is we prepared journal entries in the general journal, that was chapter two, and we posted to the ledgers, that was also chapter two. And to finish it off, we prepared an unadjusted trial balance. After that, then that was where we ended chapter two entirely. Chapter three was all about our adjusting journal entries, adjusting our prepaids, adjusting our accrued accounts, um, basically making sure the matching principle um, is followed and that we are using accrual based accounting. From there we prepared the adjusted trial balance and the adjusted trial balance once again the trial balance doesn't really tell us anything other than that the debits and the credits are equal and we didn't make any big obvious mistakes. So after the adjusted trial balance we are ready to start working on financial statements and that's what this chapter is about. The first thing that we can do and um, and we'll talk about it briefly, is we can complete what's called the worksheet. And this is really optional. Right? Financial statements are required, um, no question there. But the worksheet is just a tool that we can use in order to build the financial statements more easily for ourselves. Um, and like I said, I'll, t I'll talk about it, but I won't take too much time on it, simply because it's difficult to explain the worksheet without actually doing a worksheet together. So I'll get you through the basics of the worksheet. After the worksheet, yay, we're ready to do financial statements. Um, so we're going to work on our financial statements and building them. And the financial statements, we start off with the income statement, we move on to the statement of retained earnings, and then we prepare the balance sheet. And those are three of the four major financial statements. We will be covering only three of them in this class. The fourth one you can save for managerial accounting. Um, so after the financial, so and that's a statement of cash flows. So we've got our three major financial statements, and they have to be prepared in that order. There is no question about it. They have to be prepared: income statement first, then statement of retained earnings, and then the um, balance sheet. They're, they the information builds off of one another, so you absolutely need to prepare them in that order. After the financial statements are done, and we've reported all of our data, the next step is closing entries, and we'll talk about what that is when we get there closing entries. After the closing entries we have yet one more set of trial balances to do. I'm getting running out of room here. The last trial balance that we have to do is called the post closing trial balance. Okay? And you get the idea there. It's after the closing entries. So, you know, post means after. After the closing trial balance. And that's where we stop. The accounting cycle is completely finished and we're ready to go on to the following year. So let's talk about a few things first. We'll go to the PowerPoint slides. Let's look at the worksheet. How the worksheet works is you start off with all the balances in the accounts through the unadjusted trial balance. Here's all the debit accounts, here's all the credit accounts, all through the trial balance. And you see my debits equal my credits and we're good. What we would do from there is we would take any adjusting journal entries, this is our chapter 3 stuff, and we would adjust the accounts. So in this case, you had a debit to accounts receivable and a credit to fees earned. That must have been a crude revenue journal, journal entry, back to chapter 3 again. Um, and what you would do is you would include the debit and you'd include the credit. All right, And you see how they match. You'd include the debit for supplies expense. You must use up $1,240 of supplies and you've got a credit to the supplies account over here. All right, so you'd debit and credit each one of your adjusting journal entries. And from there, you'd carry the balances across to this adjusted trial balance, these adjusted trial balance columns. How that would work is if the account, like cash here, was started off 2065, it had no adjustments to it, then it would just carry across this 2065. Okay, nothing crazy there. Accounts receivable did have an adjustment to it. So you started off with a $2,220 debit balance. You had a $500 debit balance being added to that amount. So now your final debit balance after the adjusting entries is $2,720. Okay? Now supplies on the other hand had a $2,000 debit balance. You've got a credit adjustment of $1,240 that leaves you with a debit balance of $760. If you're not clear what I mean, put it in a T account. You'd have $2,000 in supplies on the left-hand side, you'd have a $1,240 credit on the right-hand side, and you would net the two. And after netting the two, you would wind up with a debit balance of 760 
Okay, so if accounts had adjusting entries to them, you would make those adjustments. Like here you go again, here's prepaid insurance. You had $2,400 in the account as a debit balance. You had an adjusting journal entry that was a credit to that account of $200. So at the end of the day, you wind up with a $2,200 debit in that account. All right, so you go through this for all the accounts. And again, your debit should equal your credits in each of these columns, right? That's the adjusted trial balance, making sure your, your debits equal your credits. Now from here, you have two more columns. You have the income statement column and the balance sheet column. This is really where it really comes into play why you use the worksheet because it helps you to build the financial statements. All right, so it breaks apart these items for you from the trial balance so you can eat more easily put them directly on the financial statements. So here you are. Starting off with the income statement, as I mentioned, you have to do the income statement first. You have here all of your income, income statement items and you're just taking the items right from the adjusted trial balance and putting them in the right columns over here. So you've got your revenues. The only things that are going on in your income statement at this point are revenues and expenses. Eventually you'll have revenues, expenses, gains, losses. But for right now we're keeping it simple, just, just recording revenues and expenses on the income statement. So here we are. Here's our revenue accounts. They had a credit balance over here, so we're just going to carry them right over here. And then you had all of these expense accounts over here as a debit balance, because expenses are always, always debits and they're going to move right on over here. So at the end of the day, you're going to have $16,960 worth of revenues minus $9,855 in expenses. We basically have net income of $7,105. Okay, these debits should not equal the credits. And the reason being is if you had your debits equal your credits in this scenario, then that would mean you made no money this year, and that's not a good thing. So what you're really looking to show is your debits is, I'm sorry, your revenues minus your expenses, hopefully you leave you with net income and not a net loss. Okay, so after you include that net income number, you can see that we do balance. Okay, now if you remember way back to the beginning when I talked about how all the financial statements work together, that net income number of 7,105 ultimately finds its way into the statement of, into the statement of owner's equity or the owner's equity section of the balance sheet. Okay, you'll notice we're skipping a statement in here, the statement of retained earnings. Any of the items that would come together to be retained earnings basically are going to be on the balance sheet. Okay, so the items that would normally be in your statement of retained earnings would be net income. It would be any owner's equity that you had in there from previous periods, any retained earnings that you had in there from previous periods. Um, did I mention dividends? No. Uh, and any dividends that are being paid out. All of those things ultimately combine together to be the final balance in the owner's equity section. So we're going to keep all of those on the balance sheet then. We're just going to skip the statement of retained earnings and put the items that wind up adding together to be the retained earnings number straight on the balance sheet. So here you go. You're pulling across all of your assets. You're pulling across, here's all of your assets. You're pulling across accumulated depreciation. You're pulling across your liabilities here. Um, and Ultimately, here you go, you've got your capital stock, as I mentioned, uh, comes across, dividends comes across. And here's the thing, if you added all of these up right now, you would have $33,545 in debits and $26,440 in credits. That doesn't equal, right? So that's not good because your balance sheet is always supposed to equal. The difference between the two is the net income number, this $7,105. It comes over, so it's how much did your business make and how much are you keeping in your business. So that $7,105 $7, is coming over and getting included with your retained earnings. So at the end of the day, you've got $33,545 and $33,545. You're both equal. Your worksheet is done. And now when it comes time to prepare the financial statements, you are just going to be able to pull these numbers right from these columns of the worksheet and plop them right into the financial statements to prepare them. Okay, so let's talk about those financial statements a little bit in the next section.